In this video, I will be demonstrating how a multi-patch feature can be created, edited, and passed between City Engine and ArcGIS Pro. A multi-patch feature is a GIS object that stores a collection of patches to represent the boundary of a 3D object as a single row in a database. Patches store color, texture, transparency, and geometric information representing parts of a feature. The geometric information stored in a patch may be triangles, triangle fans, triangle strips, or rings. Both City Engine and ArcGIS Pro allow for the creation and editing of multi-patch features. To begin, I'm going to create a set of 3D models in City Engine. My first model will be created by drawing a footprint and applying a building rule to generate a parametric form. After applying this rule, I have the ability to change parameters in the inspector window that impact the form of the building that we see in this scene. Note that the building that we see is a model that is being generated from a rule on top of a shape, in this case, the building footprint that we drew. The second model that I'm going to create now is based off of the shape creation tools. I'm going to create a simple building first. While I am creating my shapes, you will see that a little handle appears that I can push and pull to extrude my features. I'm also able to grab on different edges and vertices to create new slopes and angles in my shape. If I hold down the letter T on the keyboard, I can keep my shapes oriented to the face that I'm drawing on. Now that I've created my object, I'm going to assign some textures to my model that I downloaded earlier. To do this, I'm selecting my building and then clicking on Shapes, Texture Shapes. I'll browse to the image file that I downloaded and placed in the Assets folder. I have a few options here to change orientation, rotation, scale, and stretch of the texture. Right now, I'm just going to adjust the scale and dimensions of my texture to suit the model. I can click Assign to see the texture applying to the model, and I can also continue to adjust my texture scale and orientation until it looks correct. Now, I'll apply a roof texture by selecting a new image from my Assets folder, and using the same method as before, I'll apply a texture to the roof. I'll continue to click on each face to assign my textures. I can also hold down the shift key and click to select multiple faces at the same time to speed up this process. With both objects completed, I'm going to export them into a geodatabase. To do this, I'll select them and then go to File, Export Models, File GDB. For this demonstration, I need to ensure that I export both models and shapes. We will see what this means when we switch into ArcGIS Pro. The rest of the settings, I will stick with the default options and then I'll click Finish. Now let's switch into ArcGIS Pro to add and edit our data. First, I will create a new local scene.
Now I'll add some data to the scene by navigating to the geodatabase that I just created in City Engine. My geodatabase is stored in the models folder of my City Engine project. Let's switch back into City Engine where we can see the folder path that we created by right clicking on my geodatabase folder and going to properties. Here I can copy the path and use it back in ArcGIS Pro. Now that I am able to add my data, I'm going to click to add both features to my scene. I'll zoom to the layer by right clicking on my added feature and clicking on zoom to layer. If we look at the two files that we've added, we can see that the object that I created in City Engine through the drawing tools is shown in the shape layer, while the model that was created from a City Engine rule is shown in the shape procedurally generated layer. While ArcGIS Pro distinguishes between these two objects, they are still both viewed as multi patch in this format and cannot be further manipulated parametrically. However, as I will show you now, we can edit these features through the ArcGIS Pro editing tools. First, I will click on the Edit pane and then the Vertices tool. On the right hand side, I can click Select a feature and select the building that I want to edit. Now, when I hover over a building face, a draggable handle appears that allows me to change the building form. I can also split a face by clicking on the edge that I want to split to start a split line and then finish my split by clicking on another edge. Now this face is split and I can drag each face separately. I can also draw a new object with the vertices tool by clicking to create points and then dragging on the newly created face to extrude it. Finally, I can apply or update textures in my multi-patch by selecting the multi-patch texture tool and loading a texture. At the bottom, you will see that I have the ability to pan and zoom into my texture before applying it to my object. Now that I have edited my multi-patch in ArcGIS Pro, I will save my edits and the geodatabase will be updated with my newly updated forms. If we go back to City Engine and re-import our geodatabase, we will see that the updated shapes are now reflected in the City Engine environment. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video though, multi-patch features are usually stored as triangulated faces. We can see these triangles here. I can do a quick shape cleanup by selecting all of my objects and going to Shapes, Cleanup Shapes, and applying this tool to my objects. Now we can see that some of the triangulated faces that were created when we generated a geodatabase earlier are cleaned up and simplified, making it a bit easier to work with our models again in our City Engine environment. This concludes the Multipatch and City Engine and ArcGIS Pro tutorial. For more tutorials, check out Esri Canada's Higher Education Resource Finder. There, you will find additional lessons relating to 3D content creation in City Engine, BIM and SketchUp workflows, and other relevant lessons in GIS and spatial analysis.